that holds for these materials is this one, okay? However, very important, when we use this equation, we always need transform temperatures to Kelvin. Okay, so in this case, the glass transition of 100 Celsius degrees equals to 273, okay, approximately, uh, 273 plus 15, uh, point 15, something like that, plus 100, which makes 373 Kelvin. And uh, that leads to a glass transition being 3 over 2. Times seventy-three, sorry, seventy-three. Uh, sorry, the melting point. Uh, and that is five five nine point five Kelvin, which is approximately equal to two eighty six point five Celsius degrees. Okay. I repeat, these are empirical relationships. These are not like, uh, uh, these do not provide a very, uh, let's say, very, very accurate uh, kind of uh, melting point, but still can be used in order to get an approximation for uh, the melting point, okay? This is an asymmetric polymer. A symmetric polymer, like um, polytetrafluoroethylene, let's say, would look like the two carbons. <laughs> Sorry, not too much space. A symmetric polymer would look like that. So the bonds of the carbons are um, um, are symmetric along uh, two carbons. PTFE. Okay, very simple question just to warm up. And now let's go to question number two. We have 200 grams of a polymer that consists of the fraction shown in the following table. Okay, what are the values of number average molecular weight, weight average molecular weight, and the polydispersity of the sample? I repeat, I want you to remember the equations, simple equations that uh, you can use for uh, the molecular weight averages in the exam, okay? So uh, go ahead and try this one. I'll give you around 10 minutes and uh, we'll come back with uh, the answer in 10 minutes. Of course, when you have answers, just uh, post them on, on Wicom, Wicom, WeChat or whatever it's called.
Anyone? I don't see no, any any answers in the in the chat. That's very weird. This is very easy. Come on. Let me see the Polymers group. Anyone has posted anything? No. Materials group. No one. Okay, I give you uh, two more minutes and uh, I'll provide you with the answer. It's a shame to, to, to lose marks for from these um, very simple questions, okay? Uh, if I was you, I would be very pleased with myself if I lost any, any marks, any, any points from, from such a simple exercise. What's that? Yeah, indeed, first one's correct. Young. I repeat, I repeat some guidelines for um, for the exams. Clean letters, clean clean scripts. Don't don't make a mess of a script which is difficult to mark, difficult to read, and, and problematic for me or for whoever reads it, because you realize that there are going to be 240 scripts that I need to mark. If all of them are messy, unclear, um, use of, of English and language is not good, then you realize we have a problem, okay? So be as clean as you can, be very specific in what you're saying, Very well, Dorian, that's correct. Where's the polydispersity index, Han? I'm missing a polydispersity index from here. You see, that's a, that's a silly mistake. You've already uh, answered the question and you know, call this first thing. This is the simplest kind of question in there, just to give you more points, okay? So, you see? <laughs> yeah. Try to remain calm in the exam, of course. Um, it's not going to be very, very difficult exam paper, but um, there are a bit, uh, a couple of tricks that you know you need to be paying uh, attention indeed that's correct uh very well Arnon. <coughs> give you a couple more minutes because i i now get more answers so people have started solving this so yeah remain calm be focused read read the, the description of the problem very carefully and uh, think calmly and deeply write uh, write your answers you know carefully and uh, everything should be fine um let me see what dennis says yeah dennis is also correct um now in the what is that more i have something in the chat here is it chat here Yes, yes, guys, I will upload uh, these problems uh, on QM Plus after classes, as, as I've done with, uh, with all notes and, and so on. And if I forgot, if, have, if I have forgotten anything that we discussed um, during the class and I have not uploaded it, I was checking yesterday, I think I have uploaded everything, but if I haven't uploaded something from, from what we have uh, been discussing or 
any notes I've been making for you and so on, uh, let me know and I'll, uh, I'll upload it um, immediately. Okay, I don't see any more answers and we have quite a few problems to, to go through together. So let me check Han, what did you say for molecular work? For the polydis, first thing indeed is a point two. Um, I should point out that in in these um, in these kind of calculations for uh, molar mass averages, uh, it's it's fine if you know if the value is three hundred sixty three hundred three thousand six hundred and sixty seven, and you you put three hundred three thousand seven hundred, it's still fine, okay? Because we're talking about averages. And approximations are, are still fine. Okay, so solution. What is the definition of number average molar marks? Sigma W I sigma W I M I. Okay, so that is equal to. 100 plus 50 plus 50 that's the uh, overall mass so that is 200 okay and here we have 100 over to uh thousand plus 50 not two thousand two times yeah two times uh 10 to the fourth is twenty thousand plus uh, 50 over, I think that's correct, 100,000, yep. And from that, approximately, we get a number average molar mass equal to approximately 377 grams per mole. I repeat, once again, please pay attention to units provide units in whatever you draw in uh, the final exam it's a silly thing but it costs you uh, marks okay I'm, I'm very particular I'm, I'm very particular about the units in the exams you need to provide them with whatever you discuss so uh, don't lose silly marks from that okay now weight average molar mass Weight average molar mass is more simple in this case because we're giving we're given the masses. Okay, so this one is given by sigma w i m i. So we have hundred over two hundred to ten to the third plus fifty over two hundred two times ten to the fourth plus 50 over 200 times 1 10 to the fifth and that gives us a weight average molar mass equal to 31 uh, thousand grams per mole okay and finally we said that the polydispersity it is a very important uh, characteristic of polymers. It's given by the ratio of the weight average molar mass over the number average molar mass. Okay. In this case, about thirty-one thousand over three seventy, three thousand seventy-seven, three thousand seven hundred and seventy. Sorry. So we have a relatively high polydispersity index of 8.2, okay? One more similar question, just to uh, make sure that you still, uh, we're still on the same page regarding uh, the number of original weight average molar masses. Um, the polymer blend is given over these three monodispersed fraction with masses of 20, 50, and 30 grams and molar masses of 20,000, 100,000, and 300,000 grams per mole, respectively. Again, we want number of average molar mass, weight average molar mass, and polydispersity index. I give you again uh, 10 minutes, and we will discuss um, uh, the question afterwards.
。T B， 你能让我们一能能让我们两只手吗？Indeed, I'm starting to get some correct answers.
Two, three, two more minutes and uh, I'll provide you with the answer. Yeah, Dan is well spotted. Um, let me, sorry, the iPod has locked itself. This one here is wrong, right? Just grams per mole. And that's correct. <clears throat> okay. So, um, in this case, just to make my life a little bit more easier, I will transform the grams to, to kilos, okay? And in order to, to solve for the number of average molar mass, we also said uh we also said that uh we have this other equation which gives us that the number of average molar mass is equal to one over sigma w i over m i okay and i told you uh i i would like to 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 use um uh to use kilos in this case so in this case w1 is 0.2 W2 is 0.5. No, 0 0.02. Anyway, let me, let's stay at, at, at grams, it's better. And um, also, of course, we, we have this equation from, from previously, okay? So we can use either this one or MN equals to sigma. Sigma WI, Sigma WI over MI, okay? So either of you, you want to use, it's still fine, okay? So for MN, if we take the second one, which is similar to what we saw earlier, it's 120 over 20,000 plus uh, 50, over 100,000 plus 30 over 300,000 equals to 62.5 uh, kilos per mole, kilogram per mole. And another uh, weight of molar mass, sigma w i m i, which uh, similar to what we saw earlier gives uh, 144 kilograms. Per mole, okay, and finally the PDI is equal to weight average over number average is equal to 2.304, okay, low polydispersity index, which means a narrow molecular weight distribution. Now let's go to a different style of, of exercise. Uh, we, we're we're uh, going away from uh, the uh, weight fractions and number uh, and the uh, average molar masses. So we have this small angle X-ray scattering data, this graph essentially here, for a polystyrene block isopropylene, isopropylene uh, uh, copolymer with lamiral morphology. 
okay? And so this maximum, two, three, four, ignore, four, it's very small. At Q values of 0 0.264, 0 0.542, and 0 0.819. So we want the lamellar, lamellar plane spacing, okay, of the domain and the thickness of the polyisoprene uh, layers. So we want the D, what is the D, and what is the thickness of polyisoprene, okay? I give you 10 minutes for that.
Dorian, what about thickness? <clears throat> couple more minutes and we'll provide you with the answer. I didn't upload the revision lecture notes on QM Plus. Let me check. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I'll upload them if not. Uh, well, let me have a look. Okay. Oh yeah, you're right. Um, sorry, I don't know your name, but uh, um, yeah, certainly I will upload this. Uh, apologies for uh, not having done so far, but um, I will upload this. Yeah, absolutely. Four. Nope. Dorian's not uh, the right answer. Have another go. Think of the volume fraction of poly uh, style. Why is this given and uh, what can you do with that? Anyone else for for the um, lamellar, lamellar plane spacing? D, D, tron, D is indeed um, in that order. Thickness, no. Dennis, you're correct about uh, the um, thickness. Again, no. Which one? You, uh, you're very close, but you need um you need to read the uh, question a bit better you know why you want no Benedict, no. One more minute and I'll give you the answer. No, Dennis, that's wrong. Yeah, okay. Let me let me give you the answer. Uh, let me raise these ones. <coughs> uh, let me take this from here. 
So, solution. We have this equation for the lamellar, lamellar plane spacing, which is related to the scattering vector by this very simple equation, 2 p n over q, okay? Where n is the order of reflection. Okay, so we have three orders of reflection, n, uh, n sorry, q in nanometers to the minus one, and d in nanometers. Okay, so for the first order of refle reflection, we have q that equals 0 0.264, okay? And if we substitute in this equation where we know everything, we have d equals to 23.80 nanometers, okay? For the second order of uh, reflection, we have q equal to 0 0.542 and d equals to 23.19. And finally, for the third order of reflection, we have 0 0.819 and d equals to 23.02. Okay? And from these three, we average equals to uh, 23.34 nanometers, okay? Any answer along these lines, I uh, would take it, I would have taken it as correct, okay? Now, uh, the second question that you uh, struggled was, what is the thickness, the thickness of the poly ring layers? Okay, we have the volume fraction of polystyrene is 0 0.64, okay? So, if the volume fraction of polystyrene is 0 0.64, then what is the volume fraction for polyisoprene? The F of polyisoprene, 0 0.36. Okay, and now we need to assume that the density of polyisoprene is the same with the density of the uh, polystyrene. That is the density, okay. And in this case, the thickness of polyisoprene layers equals to 0 0.36 times 23.34, 8.30 nanometers, okay? Chuan was close, I think Chuan was, uh, he was very close, but we have the volume fraction of polystyrene here, and we want the thickness of polyisoprene. So we need to adjust this one, this equation for the volume fraction of polyisoprene. Okay. And let's, Let's have one final one, very simple. Uh, it says molecular weight, scraps from all. Okay, so final one, uh, two, three minutes. We do this one and we finish, okay? Uh, you get rid of me. So um, three, four minutes for this one and we, we're done. Provide you with the yeah, but uh, no need to to show you again the equations or or anything.
We come quite unexpectedly. What what happened? No, um, my phone is fine. Anyone has any answers, please post them on. We, we come. Full semester, I still haven't learned the name of this application. Anyone? Just so point out that uh, if you want to contact me um, with any questions for your revision or so, um, yeah, it's better if you try to avoid the week on, uh, I don't know, the notifications, it's, they're not great, I don't know, on my phone, uh, I don't get them very often, so there might be a delay if you contact me through Wecom. I suggest you either use my email if you want to and do it privately or uh, the forum, of course. It works because I received these, uh, these emails from the forum directly to my email. Come on, anyone? Oh, you're too bored already? It's already five o'clock there. Huh? Time for dinner. Um, yeah, John, very well. That is correct. Anyone else? Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, honey, you have a typo. Check your calculations. Bryce, very well. Emma, very well. Let me check the polymers group. Only John from polymers. Anyone else? Edward, let me check. You see, Edward, that's exactly what uh, uh, I like to avoid. Of course, your calculations are correct, but you know, try to be less messy and more clear. Okay. Of course, that is now your kind of uh, note, so it's fine. But yes, very well. That's correct. Very well, Han, you spotted it. Very well, Karen. That's correct. I tell you, it's uh, th these kind of uh, questions are easy. You know, you shouldn't be losing any marks from these ones. Okay, let me provide you with the answer and we finish with that. Uh, um, just okay. What is the thermodynamic section, uh, Dorian? Do you mean the uh, blends? So, for the number of molar mass, we have this equation sigma n n i m i over sigma n i. Okay, but this one also equals sigma w i sigma w i over m i so in this case we have one plus two plus two one over ten thousand plus two over fifty thousand plus uh, two over a hundred thousand so that equals to 31.250 grams per mole. For the weight average, we have the equation sigma ni mi squared, sigma ni mi, that equals to 1.5. Sigma W that equals to ten thousand plus two times fifty thousand plus two times hundred thousand. Sorry, uh, over five, and that equals to sixty two thousand grams per mole and finally the polydispersity index equals to mw and then 62,000 over 31 to 50 1.98 okay let me check some you have, have a couple of questions <clears throat> Firstly, Dorian's point. Um, yes, you're supposed to know the Flory Huggins uh, equation for the blends, not to derive it, but I want you to know uh, the, the equation to, by heart, and I want you to also know 
what are the parameters that are included in the flow Huggins equation because they're uh, very significant also for the um, uh, phase structure uh, and the phase diagrams of, of blends, okay? But you're not supposed to know how to derive them or whatever, okay? Uh, what is... Yeah, Benedict, that is very, very similar to how it's supposed to look. We have polystyrene alternating with, um, uh, with uh, polyisoprene, okay? So uh, the D is not, yeah, no, the D uh, that we calculated because we assume that the densities are both the same, so there's no difference in terms of the thickness uh, of, the two, um, of the two layers, that gives us the opportunity to calculate um, uh, the thickness. Uh, no, we, we, we have the, um, the distance between the two shapes uh, is, um, is uh, calculated by this equation that I provided. I uh, have another question. Yes, why do we have to assume the same density of polystyrene and polyisoprene? Because the vo we want the volume to be constant for these ones in order to calculate the distance between the two. If the volume at the same density was different, then it would give us way more complications. And in general, for materials such as uh, polymers, the densities are not very different. They are in the order between 1 to 1 1.2 or something like that. So the differences are very small, uh, but still they can uh, cause us some problems with calculations. So uh, only we assume that the density of polystyrene is because we want um, the, essentially the, the thicknesses of the materials to be considered in the lamellar structure to be the same. So we all only calculate uh, the, the distance between uh, the two materials. Okay. Of course, any questions might come up. I'll upload these to this. Uh, slides these slides these problems to uh qm plus um have no other questions i need to go now uh jack can you please post it on on, on the forum because i need to go now uh miscible and compatible Miscible are fully miscible materials, they can be uh, completely mixed, uh, but uh, compatible are materials that uh, <coughs> can be mixed, but uh, depending on the situation of, of the mixing, we might not have full miscibility, okay? What else do I have here? Yeah, of course, tacticity has very significant impact on polymer properties because tacticity affects the regularity that uh, of, of the chains okay if uh, material is uh, atactic so the uh, arrangement of um, of uh, some groups is random on the chain that affects the packing of the chains and if that affects the packing of the chains the crystallinity is much lower with much lower crystallinity, you understand that we have different mechanical properties and different also thermal characteristics, such as melting point or glass transition and so on. So tacticity affects very, very significantly the majority of the, pro of the properties of polymer, okay? Okay, I don't see any other questions for now. But of course, as I told you, any, any questions, either on the forum or on, on my email is fine. I need to tell you that uh, the last day to, uh, to uh, send me any questions is uh, two days before the exam, because uh, I don't know how busy I'm going to be over the, the day before the exam. So you might not get an answer if you ask me uh, a question exactly the day before the exam. Good luck with your exam. It has been a pleasure and a privilege of, of, uh, of teaching you this semester. I sincerely hope uh, I'm, I'm going to see you uh, next semester 
and uh, teach you a bit of uh, polymer composites with Han and sincerely uh, hope that I will be able to come to China, meet you all in person and um, spend some time with you. Okay, uh, good luck with your exams. As I said, I'll be uh, around if you need any help or if you need any advice. Um, yeah, see you next semester. Best of luck at your exams. And of course, any advice, any help you might need, not only for, for um, not only for polymer physics, but uh, in general for your uh, master courses and so on. And any advice you'd like, I'm more than happy to to have a chat with you. Okay. Good luck, guys, and we will be in touch. Okay. Hopefully, I'll be in Xi'an next uh, semester, and we will share a coffee and uh, see you around at uh, QMES. I know it's been a pleasure. Thank <laughs> you.